All right, so we're back on the moon doing our work. And one of the details I'm not fully satisfied with is when I carved this sort of linear build up to the craters, I did it with the sharp part of the pokey tool. And that leaves you with a very linear, simplified version. And uh, that's great because the camera picks it up really well. But in terms of textural elements, uh, I want it to have a little more body. So now I'm switching from the point of the pokey tool to the side to give the, the visuals of the valleys and troughs instead of a, a simple sort of linear expression of the same thing, right? You can draw your outline with the pokey tool, but then um, doing your highlights and your lowlights and your undercuts and uh, your overlays really gives a sense of uh, dynamic nature to whatever you're trying to create. So we all know that when you're looking at the moon, it's a sphere, and we're approximating that in not two dimensions, but like two and a half dimensions. So there's a lot of fudging that goes on in terms of what that looks like. But, um, you know, it's, it's good to take the time to try and replicate the elements that seem most important to you to really define, like, how these mountains and valleys interplay together. So I'm sitting now, and I'm going through all the crater work that I've done, and I'm blending those textures to really emphasize what I expect to see on, on a representative image of this moon here. So as we go from these craters up to this sort of mountain with a point of impact, those valleys all have kind of a subtle linear shadow where <clears throat> the valleys build up. And so we just want to blend all that so it's not just a smooth, polished section. So we'll switch to time.